Hi, welcome along to another video. This time going to give you a update and kind of final video on the court case that was in the High Court in London about a judicial review to bring in legislation on weather and climate modification. That's standalone legislation. What I mean by that is, is that it has nothing to do with afforestation which is the UK government's go-to thing to do with weather and climate modification. There's no need for legislation because legislation exists that covers afforestation and I swear to you that's the sort of conversation that was going around about this with politicians etc. So just to recap I did an appeal to the High Court of Appeal and that has been reviewed by a judge and it's a serious no-go. So for those of you that just want to know the outcome, we'll start at the end. It hasn't been successful, so it's not happening. I know that might sound disappointing for a lot of you, but just keep in mind, it was so unlikely to succeed in the first place. And now we'll go through a bit, few bits and go a bit further into why it was unlikely to succeed and you know what what the future moves are regarding this sort of thing so in this next part i'll go through the high court appeal and then after that i'll show you the legislation the white paper template that we've been trying to get through parliament and we will go through that in full so you can see in this first image it's got the high court seal 17th of february 2023 turner versus the law commission and DEFRA, that is. And the order has been made by the Right Honourable Lord Justice Warby. Moving on, those of you that have looked at this while I've been chatting might have noticed something. Now, I'm not sure what Mr. Windsor's pronouns are. So if I'm supposed to say the Her King or the King Her Majesty, I'm not sure. So we'll just stick to Mr. Windsor because like there is something very wrong with this document on the 17th of february 2023 so on consideration of the appellant's notice and accompanying documents but without an oral hearing in other words i haven't been asked to attend the court either for the original administrative court one or this appeal in the high court of appeal in respect of an application for permission to appeal against the refusal of the High Court to grant permission to apply a judicial review and an extension of time for appealing against that refusal, decision refused. As before, they're saying it's totally without merit. And you can see there it says no civil restraint order CRO imposed, which for me on seeing that, in the summary there was kind of a green light to go for the supreme court then but as mentioned just a minute ago um i can't do that i have to cease and desist because of that cro so because they see what i'm doing as being totally without merit any further claims or applications that are totally without merit will call for reconsideration of the decision not to impose a cro a civil restraint order so if i take this further in any way shape or form at the courts they'll impose the cro and this is what that means it means i will not be able to contact mps parliament the courts or any other interested parties on the subject of weather and climate modification if i persist after a cro has been applied then I go to jail. Simple as that. So CROs are normally um, used like against um, stalkers, things like that. You know, people who are carrying out sort of like threatening activities towards people, blah, blah, blah. Which obviously I'm not. There's no malicious intent whatsoever. So it serves no one. And definitely not myself to have a CRO out against me on this subject. Their claims um, that the case is totally without merit. It's just ridiculous. For example, so as we get into the next part then, it's kind of a good time to remember that the judges are like referees. They're just making sure the law is applied correctly. 
And in this specific case, the court staff, administrative staff that I've been dealing with have been really helpful. I'm wondering if you can hear the seagulls there. So that's something for anyone doing this in the future. Over the last decade or so, law and the courts, etc., have become more public accessible. And as long as you get your administration right, there's no reason why any individual can't do anything. Doesn't mean you're going to succeed. Depending on the subject you're working on, sometimes knocking on doors and asking questions, getting the conversation started, sets the foundation for other people to do things in the future. You cannot predict what's around the corner from what you do today. Except in this case, when we can predict that I'll be going to jail. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. So the first defendant, that's the Law Commission. So the judge has concluded the Law Commission has not arguably failed to discharge its statutory functions. The Law Commission has no power to introduce regulation anyway. And it's a new challenge not covered by the claim form. It's the, been the basis of everything from the start of this case. Okay, that's like point one. So anyway, uh, the Law Commission's Act 1965, an act to provide for the constitution of commissions for the reform of law. Section one, the Law Commission for the purpose of promoting the reform of law of England and Wales. My argument is there is a failure to introduce weather and climate modification regulation between 1952 and 2022 due to the threat of the CRO. I can't respond to this incorrectness. So the court side of it is the court side of it. I imagine you'll be looking at this the same as I do from a weather and climate modification perspective and not necessarily a legal perspective, whereas they'll be looking at it from a legal perspective and not a weather and climate modification perspective. Anyway, as mentioned, the outcome is the outcome. It's a dead end now. Doors have been knocked on. There's a lot of people in the high courts in London that maybe now know at least the terminology weather and climate modification. It's up to them what they do with that. So let's take a look at the regulation now they've been trying to get introduced. So we'll go through this in full. It's about eight pages. Go through it as quickly as possible. Hopefully you'll stay awake. Hopefully I won't fall asleep. It's been seen by politicians. No one seems to dislike it. They just can't seem to take it further. And remember, it's a template. It's not a demand that it gets implemented word for word. And I've really had to run a tight ship on this because some outside influences wouldn't serve the cause and I honestly don't mind saying that. So it's a Weather and Climate Modification Act that will be hopefully introduced by someone with a date and it might even be referred to someone. It is enacted by the Houses of Parliament as follows. Another reason to go through this is so that you can see is there anything offensive in it? Is there anything that's just wrong, you know, kind of um, anyone who watches this from this point onwards, please say in the comments if you think there is just something way off with it. I need to know that, but hopefully every angle is covered. And remember, as a legal document, it's got to be worded in a certain way. You can't mess around. The short title this chapter shall be known and may be cited as the Weather and Climate Modification Act. Legislative intent, weather and climate modification, is defined herein as the intentional manipulation of the environment involving nuclear, biological, chemical, electromagnetic and or other physical agent activities that affect changes to Earth's atmosphere and or surface. The House of Parliament finds that weather and climate modification encompasses many technologies and methods involving hazardous activities that can harm human health and safety, the environment and the economy of the United Kingdom. 
It is therefore the intention of the Houses of Parliament to regulate all weather and climate modification activities as further set forth by the terms and provisions of this chapter. Findings of fact. Scope of weather and climate modification. Inclusive of solar radiation management, SRM, cloud seeding and other technologies, weather and climate modification activities are diverse and vary greatly in their characteristics and consequences. Weather and climate modification may involve ground-based, ground-based or atmosphere-based deployments, including, without limitation, the use of aircraft, rockets, unmanned aerial vehicles, drones, and or large balloons. Weather and climate modification activities requiring state licensing include Without limitation, weather modification involving the release of sea salt, silver iodide, barium and or other particulates to enhance rain or snow in one area while reducing the availability of rain or snow in other areas, atmospheric moisture redistribution, fog and hail management programs. Cloud cover production aerial releases of water vapour to produce man-made cloud cover. Cloud whitening. Sea salt or other particulates injected into clouds to make the clouds more reflective, after which the salt or other particulates rain out over land areas and freshwater supplies. Salt flare rockets. Fired into clouds, these rockets trigger rain downpours. Solar shields or atmospheric sunscreens, reflective particulates such as sulphur dioxide and aluminium oxide released into the atmosphere block sunlight from reaching the Earth's surface, after which such particulates rain down as pollution. Artificial ionosphere. A sustained high density plasma cloud is produced in Earth's upper atmosphere via ionospheric heaters. Large helium balloons, which release atmospheric contaminants and additional weather and climate modification activities requiring licensing, include, without limitation, 1. Ocean fertilisation by iron or lime seeding, including, but not limited to, ocean sequestration activities that produce detrimental artificial algae blooms from pollutants in the ocean. 2 re-icing or cooling the Arctic and other areas through artificial means. 3. Ocean cooling pipes. 4. Glacier reflecting blanket deployment. 5. Land-based and ocean-based carbon sequestration. Carbon dioxide sequestration and carbon capture or removal, where processes involve capturing what is considered waste carbon dioxide and depositing it at storage sites nitrogen removal and sequestration. 8. Carbon black or black carbon releases, deliberate atmospheric releases of soot to produce artificial weather events. 9. Atmospheric deployment of radio frequency microwave radiation and or deployment of other physical agents for stated and or unstated purposes. Got you covered so far, isn't it? Aircraft weather and climate modification activities include those carried out from any type of aerial vehicle, rocket, drone or balloon that involve the release or deployment of any nuclear radiation, any biological or trans-biological agents, any chemical substance other than the aircraft's fuel emissions which are harmful but necessary for flight or any chemical mixture such as chaff, any electromagnetic radiation, other than radar and radio communications necessary for an aircraft's safety. Or any other physical agent shall be subject to regulation including the licensing process pursuant to this chapter. Consequences. Documented problems arising from weather and climate modification activities include, but are not limited to, 1. Global dimming, causing reduced vitamin D absorption in humans and animals and reduced photosynthesis in plants. 2. Changes in distribution patterns and chemical contents of local rainfall. 3. 
contamination of air, water and soil as particulates fall to the Earth's surface. 4. Degradation of human, animal and plant health. When people and other living organisms are exposed accumulatively to falling particulates and other atmospheric contaminants. 5. The acceleration of biodiversity and species losses, especially the loss of endangered and threatened species as identified by the Environment Agency, each one of which species has intrinsic value. 6. Less direct sunlight reaching the Earth, resulting in increased moulds, mildews, fungi and pest problems. 7. Increases in acid rain loads from the airborne injection or releases of sulphur and aluminium oxide, with human, animal, plant and water resource degradation therefrom. 8. The near impossibility of restoring natural resources with the undermining and devaluation of state-funded conservation methods. 9. Changes in microclimates, local weather and larger scale climates within short time periods with greater likelihood of increased and cascading effects. 10. Droughts and flooding, which may severely impact state, regional and global food production. 11. Increases in ultraviolet radiation, UVA, UVB and or UVC to the Earth's surface. 12. The delay by decades of the ozone layer's potential recovery. 13. The burden that airborne reflective particulates must be repeatedly replenished since their atmospheric time is limited. 14. Visibility impairment and clutter impeding aviation safety and increasing the likelihood of small and large collisions. A quick side note for those of you that have never seen the pilots filming plane spraying, go and have a look. Talk to me about aviation safety. 15. Economic losses to various sectors of society and to the state itself, resulting from, without limitation, human health damages and increased healthcare needs contaminated soils and drinking water supplies, loss of pollinators such as bees, decreases in agricultural crop yields, dead and dying trees, loss of habitats and decreases in solar power production from lack of direct sunlight reaching the Earth's surface. In view of these facts, the Houses of Parliament, I wish, declares that weather and climate modification activities must be strictly regulated by the state through a licensing process, within which an Environmental Impact Report EIR, from the Environment Agency and preliminary, <laughs> and preliminary Detailed Impact Reports from the state agencies, state offices, departments, as well as information gathered in public hearings, shall be considered prior to a decision pursuant to this chapter. Section 4 definitions. So this might be a bit of a boring bit, but it's kind of also important. As used in this chapter, the following words and phrases shall have the following meanings. Application means a submitted written request by any person, individual or entity seeking to implement, conduct or engage in any form of weather and climate modification. Area means a portion within the confines of the state and or its territorial waters or the atmosphere above it. Atmospheric contaminant means any type of aerosol, chaff, biological and or transbiological agent, genetically modified agent, metal, radioactive material, vapour, particulate and any air pollutant regulated by the state, including without limitation, those deemed unnecessary, pursuant to the general laws, including xenobiotic, foreign to life, electromagnetic radiation, or any combination of these released contaminants. Chaff means aluminium coated particulates. Conditions means any limitations and safeguards to be placed on a weather and or climate modification activity that is licensed by the Environment Agency. 
Weather and climate modification means the intentional manipulation of the environment involving nuclear, biological, chemical, electromagnetic and or other physical agent activities that affect changes to the Earth's atmosphere and or surface. Licence means a licence issued by the Environment Agency to engage in weather and or climate modification activities. Person means any individual, trust, firm, joint stock company, corporation, including a quasi-governmental corporation, partnership, association, syndicate, municipality, program, club, non-profit organisation, or any subdivision, commission, bureau, agency, military group, university, armed services, or department of government, including quasi-government departments, or region within the United Kingdom or international body. Release means any activity that results in the issuance of atmospheric contaminants such as the emitting, discharging or injecting of one or more nuclear, biological, chemical and or physical agents into the ambient atmosphere, either intermittently or continuously. That was fun, wasn't it? So before we get into the next bit, um, this template was created from an American template and basically translated it into the UK version, if you like. You know, the American one isn't relevant to the UK, just like a UK one wouldn't be relevant to the um, American one. And regarding the UK, I don't think any of you could name me a UK politician that could come up with this. Unless, of course, someone knows the UK politician that could come up with this, then please put their name or link to them in the comments. Thank you very much. So if you're still awake, all of you that have been listening to this to go to sleep to at night time, sweet dreams. For those of you that are still awake, paying attention. Okay, section five, declaration of weather and climate modification policy. Procedure, due to the potential for significant harm, any and all contemplated weather and or climate modification activities shall require the submission of a written license application to request a license to engage in a specific type of weather and or climate modification activity on a specific date or on several specified dates during a period of time not to exceed 30 days. Every submitted license application shall be on the public record within 24 hours of submission. Where a license is granted, it cannot lawfully be used for any activity other than that specified in that license, which constitutes a contract. The regulatory framework herein requires thorough review of each license application by the relevant United Kingdom agencies, offices, departments, programmes and other parties named in this chapter. The Environment Agency may grant or deny a license, may modify conditions of a license and may revoke a license with cause. A licensee must file a report of the activity after having conducted the activity. Evaluation. Under the licensing process, any contemplated weather and or climate modification activity must first be evaluated according to factors, including any transboundary effects, any impacts of reduction of sunlight reaching the Earth's surface, the planned methods of release, dispersal or deployment of substances and or physical agents into the environment and the direct and indirect effects actual and potential upon humans and other organisms, populations, ecosystems, human structures, aviation and the state economy. Regulatory oversight. The regulatory regimes for any and all contemplated weather and or climate modification activities which may be extremely consequential, are tailored accordingly with license applications granted or denied only on a case-by-case -case basis. Following the submission of impact evaluation reports by the various state agencies, state offices, departments and programmes of the state as listed in this chapter, 
following the Environment Agency EIR report and following the public hearings and comment periods. Impact evaluation reports shall assess specific potential effects upon human health and safety, aviation safety, agricultural, biodiversity, coastal conservation, endangered species, energy, environment, forestry, habitat, water resources, wildlife and oceanographic consequences. Any and all anticipated economic impacts of these effects must be evaluated by each state agency, state office, department and other parties named in this chapter. Public comment. Comments from the general public as well as from the scientific, public health science, medical, agricultural, coastal, ecology, forestry and oceanographic communities is essential in order that scientific or other third parties and all members of the public may be given a role in the licensing process. Section 6. Weather and Climate Modification Licence Application Process. Any person seeking to implement, conduct or engage in any form of weather and or climate modification within or above any area of the state shall first submit to the Environment Agency an application for a licence to engage in a specific type of weather and or climate modification. The application shall include all of the following information as well as other information deemed pertinent by the agency and set forth in regulations for weather and or climate modification activities. A detailed description of the contemplated weather and or climate modification activity potentially to be licensed including its purpose, scope and methods. The methods shall divulge the sources and precise chemical formulas of any substances or mixtures to be used and any and all of their resulting derivatives, any type of biological materials to be used and any type of electromagnetism or other physical agent to be deployed. The licence application shall also require the provision of the names, educational backgrounds, professional backgrounds and qualifications of any and all persons to be involved in the weather and or climate modification activity, including any previous employment that could bias resulting reports. The licence application shall also require criminal background checks and insurance proposals. The applicant shall provide the Environment Agency either an electronic submission of the licence application or hard copies sufficient for distribution to each one of the relevant United Kingdom state agencies, state offices, departments, programmes and other parties listed herein. 1. Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs DEFRA 2. Office of Air Quality within DEFRA 3. Office of Flooding and Coastal Change within DEFRA 4. Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy 5. Civil Aviation Authority 6. Maritime and Coast Guard Agency 7. Civil Contingencies Committee 8. Health and Safety Executive 9. Department of Health the state agencies, state offices, departments, programmes and other parties referenced herein shall respond to the Environment Agency to acknowledge their receipt of the licence application and then from out of their respective areas of specialisation and purview within a reasonable period of time to be established by the agency shall publish online their respective impact reports naming any and all potential impacts of the proposed weather and or climate modification activity and providing alongside each of these impacts an estimate of the potential economic consequences thereof. Upon receipt of all of the findings of the impact evaluation reports from the various state agencies, state offices, departments, programmes and other parties listed herein, the Environment Agency shall commence an environmental impact review. The agency shall also schedule public hearings. In preparing the environmental impact review, the agency shall consider all of the information contained in the impact report's findings, including all public health and safety, aviation safety and environmental consequences 
with their respective economic impacts and shall publish in national and local media and online the EIR within a reasonable period of time, indicating the various types of harm and their respective economic consequences, if any, that may result from the weather and or climate modification activity proposed to be conducted by the applicant. Upon completion of the EIR pursuant to this chapter, the report shall be made part of the public record. Following online, local and national media publishing of the agency EIR report, the agency shall hold at least two public hearings to receive comment on the licence application, the state responses thereto and the EIR. Within a reasonable period of time following the last public hearing, the agency shall render a decision to grant or deny a licence for the proposed weather and or climate modification activity. If the licence is granted, the agency shall document therein any and all limitations and safeguards as conditions to be placed upon the weather and or climate modification activity, including minimally a report to be submitted to the agency by the licensee after completion of the weather and or climate modification activity and steps to be taken to track possible effects and assure prompt public reporting of any observations and objections. Upon receipt of the license, the licensee or its agent shall sign an agreement to fulfil the conditions outlined in the license. Any person aggrieved by a decision of the Environment Agency may pursue an appeal of such decision through the courts of law. Section 7. Penalties for violations. So basically the wording in this is to set a fine, you know, that has to be arranged sort of thing. So it's basically just to say if you don't follow the guidelines this is what happens. Fines, prison, whatever. Section 8. Rules and regulations. The Environment Agency shall promulgate rules and regulations to implement the provisions of this chapter, including but not limited to rules and regulations governing the license application process for weather and or climate modification activities, the contents of such application and the standards to be applied in making decisions when granting or denying a license under this chapter. All licences issued for any weather and or climate modification activities must include provisions that the applicant must have insurance. The Weather and Climate Modification Act. This Act will establish a system to regulate the intentional manipulation of the environment through various means that are known as weather and climate modification. This Act will also provide that a person seeking to engage in weather and or climate modification activities would require a licence from the Environment Agency. This Act would take effect upon passage. Bit of Admiralty and Maritime Law there to finish up. So for those of you that have gone through that with a fine tooth comb etc etc looking for problems, issues, whatever, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, just sounds like any other law really don't it so you know why it's such a big issue to have standalone weather and climate modification legislation in the UK is a bit mystifying there is no reason for it not to exist since the 1950s it was first advised to be created in the 1950s the government was advised again 15 or so years ago to create regulation for this and it still hasn't happened those of you that are educated in this subject you must think that's crazy like it doesn't send a good signal does it that the uk is on the ball with what's happening today or even what's happened in the past but just today in the world the fact that there is no regulation for this stuff tells you everything you need to know doesn't it Anyway, if you made it to the end of this video, well done. That's about all I can say to you. It's congratulations, you've got stamina. Um, in the next video, probably get back to a bit of chat GPT if we can manage to get on there. Until such time, see you next time.